All right. I hope everybody's having a good time. And day one was good. And I'm. And we have a lot of stuff going on on day two, and day three. So, uh, so this is um, was meant to be a solo talk by Nitish, and then a couple of very uh, clever fellows thought it would be more interesting to have two old fellows talk to each other and entertain you guys with some some stories. Uh -huh. Just to clarify, one young fellow and one old fellow. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, so we're just going to have a chat about, you want to go first? Yeah, sure, Rajesh. So, I think starting with IGDC itself, right? I mean, you've been driving this for so long, and we've come such a long way. And especially after COVID, you're seeing such a large, at least this is, uh, I didn't, I wasn't here last year, but I'm here this year, seeing so many young developers and so much energy. How does it feel? What's your perspective of how things have panned out? What's the future? It feels great. Uh, <laughs> put it very simply. But I think, uh, really, this conference is a reflection of the momentum that we have in the industry. And um, COVID obviously helped in the market, accelerating the market creation. Money is being made, as we saw from uh, the Lumikai report yesterday. Um, and so, more and more people are, I mean, when we started early, and I was really young and foolish to start uh, in 1997, there was no market. Uh, we couldn't have even sold 100 copies of a game at that time. So we were forced to get into services and became a services kind of a company, doing uh, development for Microsoft, Sony, and it was mainly an export oriented. So those days it was a lot of companies were had to find ways to survive and nobody could think of IP creation uh, so early. But today, if you look at it, almost everybody here is a product company. And, you know, there are a few services companies, but it, that game has changed uh, a lot. And um, if you see now on the go and walk in the expo, you'll see a lot of Indian themed games being made by Indians, by for Indians. And that's, that's a fantastic, uh, you know, because that to me is, is going to create a virtuous cycle because if you see content in India, be it um, music, television, movies, it's dominated by Indian content. And I don't know, I don't see how and why would gaming be any different. So when we, so, so far we've had a, a dearth of Indian content, but now that is changing. Now you have some good developers building good quality uh, games with Indian culture and social context. Uh, and I think that's going to be, help drive the market even more. Yeah. But yeah, the conference, uh, you know, is so many developers, the investor publisher uh, meetups, I don't know, 1,600 meetings in two days. That is, you know, creating business opportunity for people. Networking, there are so many startups that have come together because they met at the conference. And these are real impact. So, yeah, we'd, we'd like to double down and do more of this. Uh, as you know, uh, Sridhar will be leading this uh, ahead from, this is going to be my last year as a convener. Mm. But yeah, it's a, it's a great position to be in. Why last year? It was time, 15 years, I know. It was, it's time to move, you know, to hand it to someone who can take it forward, you know. Plus, I'm very busy with travel. <laughs> Amazing. I think 15 years of dedication to IGDC, guys, he deserves the applause. So, so from your perspective, you know, you've been around I don't know, when did you start? I, I, I started in 97, you was not too long. Uh, I tell when I started, I, everyone will know my age. <laughs> uh, you know, I can go as back as possible, yeah. So just, I see a lot of young developers here and I'll uh, give a little bit of my background. You know, I came from a textile family in Bombay yeah. and uh, gaming was very far away from it. But for some reason, my father bought me a ZX Spectrum when I was like five or six. 
okay that point of time we have something in common yeah. i started with a zx spectrum 2 <laughs> amazing yeah. amazing and i was completely hooked to it by the time i was 7 i was coding games on my zx spectrum using basic uh, language recording it on those cassettes, cassettes. you know the cassettes the, on the yeah. cassettes my god uh, and uh, that really became my passion my life there was no concept of screen time so <laughs> my parents didn't care i was hooked to it all the time and that's really what stoked my passion in gaming now i'm 43 so 37 years back 36 years back wow yeah. uh, and uh, thereafter i was studying in mumbai uh, i was seeing the internet boom happen in the mid to late 90s and i just felt that gaming would become large in india someday so as a young entrepreneur which you know uh, a dream in the heart uh, you know i said let's start a gaming company this was like 98 99 so you started two years yeah. later and i think vishal started around the same around time. that time same time same time india games yeah uh, so we started that time but uh, didn't realize maybe starting at least a decade too early right it really didn't exist gaming yeah. devices yeah. data yeah. payment systems yep yeah. really nothing existed but yeah it's been a long journey we've had our ups and downs uh, the early years were tough yep especially from i would say the post the dot com crash uh, 2000 to 2005 or so yep then we got breakthrough into the telco business where we started monetizing learned a lot of lessons from 2000 to 2003 2004 you know my mom always wanted me to do a mba in the us i never did it because i started uh, my company in college and could never get out but now i always tell my mom you know that i did a more expensive and more enriching mba correct sitting right here in mumbai in those early years <laughs> yes. uh, struggling I mean, right i think uh, it, when you look at the ecosystem now i wish i was 25 now yeah <laughs> because there are you know there are 67 investors publishers at this event yeah when i started there were two vcs in india that's it and they had just come in yeah and that uh, the idea, i mean i built my business by taking bank loans yeah and god knows how many times we almost died and so when you see the ecosystem now it's really nice because you have so much access to information uh, you have a conference like this you have access to um, i mean even though there is a, a so called a funding winter I don't see any good team that is not getting funded. Yeah. A good team with a good idea is getting funded. Yeah, no the landscape has changed. I mean early 2000s was uh, not an easy landscape. Yeah. I mean and today it looks like you know Nazara's India's only listed gaming company etc. But we've been through really tough times in the early 2000s. Uh, I remember a time where I actually sold office computers to pay salaries. Yes, right? So we <laughs> kind of been there done that. I had my ancestral home as as a uh, given as a guarantee yeah to get a to get working capital facilities from the bank and we almost died and if we had we would have had to sell that house correct right? but i think for any entrepreneur right and a lot of entrepreneurs and developers here i think some of this struggle is very helpful in the sense the earlier you struggle the more you learn and the lesser mistakes you'll make in the future right so i think it's very good and the second time is in your deepest despair or the darkest times you should dare to dream and i'll share an anecdote uh, i remember 2004 uh, this 2003 uh, nokia series 60 java phone that just started coming and we had started making cricket games on that in 2003 and the only way to monetize was to partner with this telcos airtel etc that's right yeah but nazara was a unknown company nobody had heard of it atel would not even offer me a meeting and we had very little capital one day sitting in my office uh, in my dad's office actually i uh, thought you know i really need to get this atel to work with me how can i do it and since we were making cricket games i thought you know let me try and get sachin tendulkar as a brand ambassador let me make a game around him and uh, atel used to be the i mean sachin used to be the uh, brand ambassador of atel in those days yes i said then atel will have to work with me if i make a game around such it and it actually happened you know in, in about 6 months how did, how did that happen so i wrote, went to sachin's the voltel was his agent i went to their site wrote them an email 
after some time they got got in touch with me uh, one day this was before the world cup in 2004 i found myself sitting in sachin's house i was 23 24 that time so of course after that fanboy moment right sachin was god for all of us of course especially in 2000 of course the early 2000s his, he was at his peak then yeah he was at his peak uh, so i kind of met him at his house and after the discussion i had actually taken a demo with uh, him playing in the game so he liked that and then he told me you know his fees in those years used to be 1 million dollars a year the endorsement fee so he said i love your concept you sign up pay 1 million dollars to my agent and let's get going i had gone with a budget of 10000 dollars <laughs> of 4 5 lakh rupees i'll give it thoda jyada so we anyway struck we shook hands at 30000 dollars so <laughs> that is great <laughs> so so that was a big breakthrough because uh, after that i called up airtel and said you know i am going to that time it was not vodafone it was max touch or But i remember that time because i had not really heard so much about you guys until that happened yeah, yeah it then everybody's like nazara got sachin tendulkar you know yeah it gave us like, a lot of credibility and and we had a different fallout also so like he was saying getting funding was not easy at that point of time i was also young and inexperienced but uh, because of the sachin deal i was featured on young turks on cnbc so young turks had just started yeah shirin ban shirin ban and the next morning when i walked into my office i had a post it note on my table saying there was a call from sandeep singhal at westbridge capital ah uh, and i called him back and he said you know i saw your interview yesterday night i'd love to meet you and 6 months after that i raised my first round which was 1.5 million dollars but it was a big amount that time for that time for, that for sure time, it was a big amount and gave us that lease of life to uh, continue uh, you know progressing yeah so i think the point i was trying to say from this anecdote is even when things are tough dare to dream because you never know what can happen yeah, i think <laughs> we have a lot of learnings over the years uh, but if i look back it's, it's, there are times when i when i look back now i say i should have let go of maybe an initiative or a game by being a little more objective rather than hanging on to it uh, and i think that's a very important quality to develop as an entrepreneur to know that when to let go and say okay this is not working let's move on and i think if i had taken some of those decisions uh, i would have saved a lot of time money energy and done something else with that time money and energy i think uh, a lot of us get very married to our ideas mera game hai ye yeah, chalega it must hai, you know but but rajesh you know i have a slightly counter view there while i agree with you specific product but you know from 97 98 when i was doing gaming to 2007 2008 is a long time yeah uh, 10 12 years where we could hardly make any good money and we largely struggled right and many times a lot of people told me boss what are you wasting your entire youth in gaming uh, many times i felt maybe i should it's high time you know i would give myself one year more saying boss if one year something happens i'll do otherwise i'll do something else but sticking around for those 10 12 years is yeah. making me sit here today otherwise correct. it wouldn't have ever happened right correct so yeah if you have a passion sometimes you have to persevere also uh, to yeah i mean ahead. for us we pivoted to services because there was no we we kept doing products monetize yeah but we realized that to pay salaries and to keep the place going we needed and also we thought that was a good way to learn from the industry as well as you in the pro, in the process of doing services you also learn a lot um so we did a lot of i mean it was hard right in the beginning uh nobody knew, in new india as a market so if you if you are now in san francisco at gdc the year 99 2000 and you are saying i'm a developer from india they're saying really i mean do you even you don't you guys don't play any games we don't sell any games in india and you 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 claim to be and i'm like with my laptop showing my demo running behind people it was very hard in the beginning but you know yeah but yeah but i think the uh, fast forward to today the beauty is you know all of you guys have such a massive opportunity uh, because india has become a large gaming market You have an opportunity to build for India. You have an opportunity to build for the world. 
as I've been saying, I think there's a large opportunity in Make in India. And I'm very hopeful that our government will also support that very strongly. I think Rajesh, we, all of us will also interact and push that a lot. Yep. I think Make in India is a big opportunity. You've got, see, everyone's got a perfect gaming device, right? A 5,000 rupee Android phone doubles down as a fantastic gaming device. Hundreds of millions of people have it. India has the lowest data cost, fantastic digital payments now. A lot of young entrepreneurs. So you have age by your side, you have markets by your side, you have investors by your side. Uh, you know, you have so much risk capital that you have to think. You, it's like, how do you replicate what Nazara did in 20 years, in two years, three years, right? For I sure. That's, that's where the opportunity today is. And I think that's possible. Yeah. Because you should learn from the mistakes we've made and the what has worked, what has not worked. Yeah. And, uh, and these are the platforms like this conference where you can just walk up to people, talk. You know, I used to, in, in the early years of the conference, and I just said this in the earlier session as well, we focused a lot on sharing failures more than the successes. Yeah. Because if you could share your fa a failure of a product or a, or a project or whatever. Others can learn from Others can, maybe there's, they were about to do the same thing and they say, are, are, let's not do this. Yeah. And I think uh, that's very important. Uh, but tell me, last five years, you, it's been a, Fantastic journey from being a vast company to where you are now. Tell us some things that went right, some things that went wrong. Look, in our journey of two decades, we've pivoted many times. I think if there's one thing you ask me, what Nazara has been able to do successfully is to pivot uh, when it's required. And sometimes uh, pivots are the toughest, right? Yep. It's not easy. When I look back, I say, boss, how did we do it? Yep. Uh, uh, it seems impossible. But I think being... Uh, flexible and maybe to that extent what you were saying in terms of letting go what you're holding yes and evolving yes uh, is uh, very important yeah. and uh, last five six years seven years we've really done a strong pivot yes uh, into many other businesses where we wanted to operate yep uh, we did our ipo we attempted the ipo in 2018 when it failed for multiple reasons uh, we re-attempted it in 2020 uh, mid right in the middle of covid actually uh, and you know went on to make it successful yep uh, so i think yeah it's been a very interesting five years also the market has grown we've had the support of now very good investors we had so yeah are there any war stories to share on uh, raising money run-ins with investors i mean there are many times i mean many of you would have heard of mr rakesh Shunjunwala. yes one of our the big pool of Sadly, India, he has one passed of away, but uh, strongest uh, backers since 2018 and there are many times I've been thrown out of his conference room for many reasons I see <laughs> including those related to real money gaming not being aggressive enough on real money gaming uh, so yeah there are there are a lot of interesting stories but largely I think at least from investors what I've seen I've interacted very closely with Sandeep Singhal at Best Pitch all the way from 2005 to 2018-19 when they exited uh, Mr. Junjunwala and many others what I have generally found is that if you have genuine positive intent towards your business and positive effort towards your business, investors understand that and are generally very patient. Right? Uh, if one of these things fail, then you will get into those run-ins with investors. I mean, I think... Uh, my, my experience, everybody has a different Having the right share. investor is super critical. Yeah. I understand that a lot of times people may not have the choice and... There may be a temptation to just take whatever money is coming, but it can invariably, such a decision can just come back to bite you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I remember uh, in 2007, we were, we were having one of our, that was probably our last near-death experience. We almost went bankrupt. Okay. And I had to raise money quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's very, you know... <laughs> You can't raise money when you're down and no, out, right? No, yeah. But and then somebody introduced me to a real estate uh, conglomerate. They got somehow interested. They took a decision that saved the company, but they didn't know the business at all. And very quickly it started going south. Like they didn't understand you know, how because real estate they are used to putting hundred and getting two hundred in two years, and ours is a longer game. So I was fortunate to be able to buy them back and get them off my back. But, you know, it can be very distracting. I would say two, three things here when it comes to raising capital, right? One is when you are raising 
getting into an agreement with investors be careful what terms you are the terms are entering. extremely important right if you're not sure send it to me i'll comment on it and give it back to you <laughs> i'm happy to do that because i don't want Correct. investors screwing uh, developers right it's very important because you're going to give this business 10 years of your life you don't want to start on a wrong note uh, so i think that's important second is of course try and run lean mean as much as possible yes uh, try and keep your burn as low as possible at least till you have product market fit yep once you have product market fit then you you know push capital into it makes sense but before that be as lean and mean and frugal as you can because like rajesh said when you need the money yeah and you try to raise capital is always difficult i right? if I you're independent that, and you are raising capital for growth it's much easier that year i think i must have met everybody but it was when you're down and out uh, you know you're not interesting yeah related matter i would say is focus on core product kpis and not vanity metrics many times you may push towards vanity metrics uh, because the investors want to see that right can you expand on that because i think it's an important point i mean for me vanity metrics i learned this lesson in the dot com days right the only metric that time was pay eyeballs correct and page views right correct that's the only number that would get talked about correct. the minute the dot com crash happened everything uh, disappeared into thin air including the investors so i think focusing on real metrics in our, our context i would say in the context of mobile gaming for example or games in general for me if a developer comes to me and says you know i have 100000 downloads of a game that's a relatively vanity metric correct absolutely right? if a investor come, uh, sorry if a developer comes to me and says my ga- game has this retention it has these kpis it will immediately get my attention right so i think focusing on real versus van- vanity metrics so earlier you and your team do that uh, it is uh, going to be very helpful okay i think we should open up for questions yeah unless we have anything else to cover no sure I mean, maybe a couple of anecdotes i can share yeah on some messages that i want to send out i think one is in my career i have seen that boss everything starts and ends by being very positive yeah Yes. Uh, right. I think the power of positivity is extreme. Is a superpower that all of us have in us, but sometimes get distracted. I'll give you a small example. One of my mentors was uh, my favorite actor, the yesteryear hero Shami Kapoor. Right. And I got the opportunity to spend a lot of quality time. How, why, and all is a long story. I'll not get into that. In his later years, in his seventies, he had dialysis. He used to go to Bridge Candy Hospital thrice a week. and sometimes i used to be at his home see him off uh, he used to get out together and he used to be in a fantastic mood uh, so one day i asked him uncle how come uh, you are in such a good mood when you are going for dialysis and so painful and all and his answer to me was you know and he was 75 or something that time his answer was you know in the hospital is the only place where i can flirt with young girls <laughs> <laughs> right and it made me think that it was just his way of thinking right I'll give another more recent example. Uh, in 2021 December, once COVID settled down a bit, some of my friends hosted a party for Nazara's IPO, and uh, Mr. Junjun Mala came on came for that party. He came on a wheelchair. He was already not well. He's been hospital for a long time, and uh, he passed away six months after that. Yes. Okay. He came for the party. It was a sundowner, so the party was wrap- wrapping up by 11 o'clock. and me and my friends were going to another party he saw us going so he said we told him we are going so he said where are you going he said we are going to another friends party he said what about my invitation he said we said no i mean you don't need an invitation to go anywhere right correct <laughs> he jumped into my car he came to the other party <laughs> this is 3 o'clock in the night we are all famished we are tired he is still hanging around <laughs> so we go to him and say you know we are going he said you all go I'm, <laughs> I'm chilling. <laughs> This is someone who's like six months away from you know, and he passed away on a wheelchair, being so sick. Unbelievable power of positivity, and at least all the people I've seen successful, right, have overcome everything with with this simple superpower. Sounds very simple. Maybe I'm sounding like a preacher. Yeah. I think it's something important for me. I wanted to share. Well, you know, it is a hard business. You are, if you are in this business, you are, you have to have the passion. Otherwise. 
don't be in this business and related thing for power of positivity to come inside you and i think this is relevant for all startup founders not just for our gaming startup founders is i think focus a lot on your physical health yes yeah please we all have stressful work but exercise 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 and focus on your diet because if your physical health is strong if your body is strong it will house a healthy mind and then mind will allow you to achieve a lot uh, again yeah. something very obvious but often neglected in our stresses of life right yep yeah. uh, i mean i got diabetes really early because of all the stress yeah and uh, i know it's been a struggle yeah. to keep it in control so good so very good advice open it up to some q and a yeah let's have some questions pass the mic around if we have somebody with mics yeah Hi sir. Uh, okay. Uh, like my company is currently into service industry. Do you think in this current trend, it is uh, okay to stick with the service industry, or should we create our own product? Can you ask without the mic? I just is echoing. He is in the services industry. He is saying, uh, given the current trends, should I be in services or should I be into products? Look, I think eventually you should be into products, right? I think the massive value creation is going to come in the product space and not services my personal opinion i may be wrong right if the services helps you monetize revenues you can have a product line starting off separately uh, that may be a hybrid model may be a good way to work but maximum value creation will happen on the product side so from for example that nazara we are not doing any services okay i i can answer that question I, because i run a services company and we had product aspirations that ran side by side we were into services because at that point there was nothing else to do and we had to find a way to survive but but doing services for 8 10 12 years your company culture its mindset is becomes very different and then doing products becomes very difficult and we realized that you cannot run products and services side by side it sounds like a great idea one is earning money and selling you but it's two different things and the kind of people you need the kind of mindset you need the kind of cadence that you have to uh, you know it's very different in services somebody else is telling you what to do and you're doing it it's all about reliable servicing time money management it's product is a whole different ball game um and there'll always be a fight we have a key resource should he be doing services or products in so if you put him on services he's billing if he's on the product team he's not billing all these conflicts dilemmas will be there you know what i'm talking about it's happening so if you can help it ultimately it's your choice there are many people who are running very successful services companies but as he rightly said you can get a two times revenue multiple as an as a exit that's pretty much it right if you're lucky uh, and we got lucky so uh, you know i'm glad for that but otherwise if you want to really value create as a 20 person team and you want a uh, you know 50 million 100 million exit you can't do that with services and uh, look at play simple look at moonfrog big exits right um, and it was all on the back of razor shop uh, focus on products what if the services company spawns off a product company does that help like create a you need people who have a product mindset sure services builds a mindset which is very different um because it's about servicing products very different uh yeah we but you could invest from your balance sheet if your balance sheet is strong yeah. but please get a fresh team for that Yes. No, yes. don't get some old people from your services team to try and run products. It's not going to work. Of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, my name is Rishi. Uh, just wanted an advice from your side. Uh, what is your advice to studios uh, who are engaged into virtual reality products dedicatedly? That's one. And two would be, what do you feel personally the future of virtual reality in countries like India? Sure. You know. 
it was 2010 or 2011 when uh, one of the investors on my uh, uh, cap table very marky investor who I'll not name uh, was pushing me very hard to set up a vr studio in 2010 Uh, so so we didn't do it that time that said in recent times I, at least personally i've been increasingly become bullish on vr uh, i've been playing a lot on the quest pro 2 quest pro or whatever yeah. at my home in fact these days i'm playing a virtual table tennis game which is quite fascinating and uh, i think the experience in my view is already there right i can play this table tennis game with people from all over the world and the physics is fantastic you it's just as good as you you are playing real table tennis and in a few minutes you forget that you're actually not in that room playing table tennis so i think from the disruption of experience uh, vr is already there maybe certain things have to still solve like uh, the handsets the headsets will become thinner lighter uh, maybe better content cheaper ultimately it's devices or it like a mass market but experience wise i think we we are already there and I, i have no doubt in my mind that playing a game to being in a game is a disruptive experience one, very true yeah one way one way street right uh, where people will go so i am very bullish on vr my my mna team is actually fed up with me because i have been pushing vr 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 a lot in the last few months uh, so uh, that's that's my personal view and i think with also now big giants really competing right you have meta you have sony uh, you have apple now coming in i think the pace of acceleration both of technology pricing availability in the next 2 3 years will uh, will what is you can't exactly time it but i at this point think it's a 10x 20x 50x opportunity at least from a nazara perspective yeah but ultimately we need devices that are cheap and which can become mass market i mean we are where we are with mo- with games in india because mobiles became cheap and data became cheap and um and it's in hands of so many millions of people yeah i think i, yeah. I don't know how long that i don't see, i don't know how that's going to play out with vr though yeah i think it's not a india opportunity specifically at this point of time but Fair perhaps enough. a good opportunity for developers to start making for the world right yep uh, good Fair quality enough. vr games for the world i think that's a good opportunity last question uh, uh my question is also on the vr industry actually i was going to ask the same question but uh, as a follow up on the, the what you said uh like you said there's a 10 20x opportunity and right now the market is very small uh so do you suggest like we should focus more towards a vc kind of investment or focus on publishers because right now there are very less amount of publishers who are actually investing in uh, uh vr gaming and uh, for investors also it's very new but since it's a long term bet uh, what do you suggest would be the right investment strategy you heard this question look publisher you have to have a good i mean publisher is a good route except most of those publishing opportunities will not be in india right now they will be a, uh, so you know you have to have access to those publishers which means you, you know you have to be at the right platforms like gdc and uh, you know pack your bags and travel around um investors you know this this can take a long time and then you need to have an investor whose life of their fund is if you, you know their funds are 7 to 10 years so if they invest in you at the fourth year of their fund they're going to put a lot of pressure on you you know within 3 years because they have to get out yeah just to yeah just to add to that my team will kill me if i don't say this Uh, who's sitting around in this room? That Nazara is very actively through its new publishing program, Nazara Publishing, uh, investing both in VR studios and also publishing for them. So you don't have to go to San Francisco then. You can just <laughs> meet his team here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, I think that's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Last oh, this question. one question. Okay, one last last question, question there. Okay. Hello. 
um uh, what's your view on the uh, gst impact on real money gaming uh, especially because if you think it superficially it looks like industry killing but uh, we we we're thinking about it and you know because the gst is on the initial wallet load right and not on every game you enter so it might not be that bad you know like how it's perceived to be yeah that's first and second how is nazara looking into you know real money gaming uh, going ahead sure so we looked at uh, we we were always cautious in the real money gaming space for the last many years uh, because of unclarity correct on regulation and unclarity on tax and the last 3 years i have got hammered so badly by investors that why we are so uh, conservative or yeah. conservative right on this whole topic but maybe maybe we are just a conservative company that's what we are i think uh, the outcome of the gst was not as the industry was anticipating correct it was a big surprise but as you are saying gst on deposit is definitely much better than gst on entry fee it's somewhat like being shot in the leg versus being shot in the head right it's going yep. to be very painful but you will survive and hopefully be able to run again versus being dead so i think that's where the industry is it's currently being reset from the nazara perspective we are actually now actively looking at that segment far more positively we are looking at it with the glass half full if i were to say because at least there is clarity there is clarity right even even though it is whatever it is yeah and is it's clarity. only going to get better because none of these policies and rules are going to written in stone they will always they all understand that it's a new industry it's nebulous they will continue to listen to the industry and keep a watch yeah. these and, things and, will evolve yeah. and i'm very supportive of building a strong responsible gaming platforms correct in india by indians rather than having all our players go to all these companies outside of india underground no responsibility nothing right correct. no tax you have R- rmg companies outside of india now running ads on google and facebook saying play with us no gst right yeah so so, so i mean I, in a in a way i know you know i have had far limited interaction i'm sure nitish and some of the industry bodies have worked very closely with the government but when i was speaking to the very senior uh, uh, bureaucrat he was like we are really after the betting companies outside india that's really what we are after we don't like it and uh, you know and there is this thing of what is betting what is so in a way we have clarity i know it's early days it's just kicked in uh, first of october we will know the real impact in the next couple of quarters but bear in mind that it is it's about 50% of overall industry there is a, another 50% which is pure games and that is growing at a cagr of 40 plus percent as we know from the lumika report yesterday uh, so i think this will be a blip uh, things are not going to slow down okay thank, thank you, you everyone thank good you luck thank you everybody